Hi, this is Dr. Kevin M. Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine again. Welcome back to our series for graduate students and residents on general pediatrics. Uh, if you would like to schedule a rotation with us, our phone number is 775-359-7111. And we train both PA, nurse practitioner, and uh, residents, so medical students and uh, DO students, so feel free to give us a call. Today we're talking about vaccines, and in a corner, the disembodied voice you hear will be one of my students talking a little bit to us about vaccines, and we're going to go through a discussion of various vaccines that uh, we give routinely. So as I kind of turn away from the camera, please forgive me, but we'll go ahead and start. So let's start by talking about diphtheria pertussis tetanus, DTP. Okay, DTAP, not live. When? Five doses, ages two months, four months, six months, 15 to eight month, 18 months, four to six years, as long as fourth dose isn't Fourth dose could be given as early as 12 months, but at least six months after third dose. Okay. Not for use uh, in those over seven years. Then they get a DTAP. Correct. Okay. Now, um, I don't know if I told you before, while well, I wanted you to be able to give a schedule for the vaccines, I personally don't care if you memorize the schedule because it is going to change. But your university in particular is known to ask questions on exams where they want you to know the schedule. That's not me. And maybe they've changed it. If they do, let me know so I don't misinform future students. But, um, you know, I, I personally think that's why you have schedules posted on the wall so that you don't have to memorize it. Eventually, you know, if you do this for a living, you will, just because I do it all day, every day. You can't not memorize it. It happens in spite of you. But for now, I, I have other things I'd rather you memorize. But for your exam, I think you do need to know this kind of stuff. Okay, what are the major side effects? This, is, this one is going to show up on everybody's exam everywhere. I don't care who teaches you. And I don't care what level you're being trained at, whether it's an MD, pediatric residency was on my board research, all of my students get asked this question. What are the side effects from the DTP vaccine? I have pain, redness, swelling, injection site. Okay, and we can, you can skip those. Those are true for, okay. and fever. Uh, those are true for every vaccine. I don't, don't need to hear about those. But there's three really weird ones. You told me about the limp kid. Okay, limp where... kid. And the, the medical phrase for this, and the one that's going to show up on your exams, is hypotonic, hyporesponsive episode. Limp and not responding. Okay. And we'll, we'll describe that in a second for you. And then the fever, which is... Um, well, we know about the fever, but yeah, what else? Yeah. There's two other weird ones. Seizures. 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 Do not, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, inconsolable crying that's not pain-driven. Mm -hmm. Inconsolable crying It's not pain-driven, and it usually lasts for more than six hours. And if you've ever witnessed this, these kids shriek bloody murder. Now, the good news is all three of these rather unpleasant side effects... Um, are self-limited. None of them are of any medical consequence for the kid. If they seize, if they go limp, you do need to work them up for sepsis. They get lumbar punctures, put in the hospital, the whole, whole nine yards. But there's no, you know, neurologic consequences for the kids, so they ultimately do okay. Um, what is the component that causes those three side effects? The the, diphtheria? It's actually the pertussis. Oh, it's the pertussis. Okay. okay. And what are your contraindications to this vaccine? Anaphylaxis after previous dose, encephalopathy after seven days of previous pertussis containing vaccine, progressive neuron disorders, okay. which you could give after they're stabilized. Okay. So of those, I don't need to hear about anaphylaxis. Again, that's true, for, obviously, for any vaccine. If you're anaphylactic to any of the components of any drug you give, don't give it. Um, so... That's true for everything. We'll assume you've said that. For um, uh, encephalopathy seven days after the pertussis, the reality is it just doesn't happen. Pertussis doesn't cause encephalopathy. You don't. It just doesn't happen. So you're not really going to be dealing with that. The last one, though, progressive neurologic disorder, okay, or a non-static encephalopathy, you don't want to give it until the encephalopathy is static, and that's just because it's a litigen or will get you sued. If you wait until it's stable, if the kid seizes 100 times a day and he's been doing it for three months and you give him DTP and now he seizes 75 times a day, you cured him. <laughs> All right, well, now we know that didn't really happen. But um, you know you didn't make him worse. 
all right? If he sees his 50 times a day today, though, and tomorrow it's 75 times a day, and tomorrow you give him tetanus, and the next day it's 100 times a day, and that was really what his destiny, destiny was for his baseline, you're going to get blamed for doubling his seizures. So if you wait, you don't get blamed for it, and then it's static, and you go back and vaccinate him. And I have had kids where... It's not been clear if it's static or not, so I call the farm or call the, the neur, uh, neurologist and just ask them, you know, is this kid stable? Can I vaccinate him? And they'll tell you, yeah, no, I don't know what's going on yet. Uh, can you wait another month? Let's just see if he's stable, and uh, then they'll tell you, and then you just go and catch him up. Okay, well that's very good for tetanus, and I'll let you go ahead. Okay, IPV, tell me about polio. Okay, IPV when again my. My school requires me to four doses, ages two months, four months, six to 18 months, four to six years. Root, I am sub Q, contraindications, hypersensitivity. To, you can uh, skip that. No, okay. Adverse reactions, I just found injection site reactions, local reactions are mild and transient. Really not a whole lot. The old oral polio, however, could cause polio because it was a live vaccine, which is why we don't use it anymore. Um, but the inactivated polio, not a problem. One thing to just realize, and I doubt this is going to show up on an exam, but I do want you to at least have heard it. When polio hit the market back in the 1950s, the first vaccine, the Salk vaccine, was injectable. Okay? It wasn't very stable, it was very expensive to give, and it wasn't all that efficacious. Uh, but it was the first one, and so Salk was very famous for his vaccine, as he should be. Um, then came the oral polio, Sabin vaccine. That was very stable at uh, room temperatures. It was very easy to give and highly efficacious. Sabin cured the polio epidemic. Salt got the ball rolling. Sabin really prevented the epidemic. But his vaccine was live and it had the potential to cause polio. This vaccine that we give, which is injectable, is not the Salk vaccine. This is an activated polio enhanced, sometimes called IPVE. So it's not Salk's vaccine. This is much more efficacious than Salk's vaccine. So you may have somebody at some point ask you, well, you know, gee, can't we do the oral polio vaccine? Because I hear this isn't as effective. And that was a problem in the 50s. It was. This is not Salk's vaccine. So just know that file it away somewhere in the back of your head for future reference because it may come back to you. Okay, perfect.